Today we we're planting soybeans. We grow mostly corn and soybeans. We were in one of our soybean fields getting ready to harvest some beans. And we've been cutting soybeans today all day. Here in Maryland, soybeans come second only to corn in terms of total acreage. And that popularity isn't limited to just our state. Across America, these little beans are big business. A business shared by more than 300,000 farms. Among them, Schmidt Farms in Sudlersville. Each fall, farmers like the Schmitz deliver beans by the truckload to storage facilities called grain elevators. When we deliver soybeans to the local elevator, that's our point of sale. They weigh the truck, how many bushels are in it. And based on that weight, the elevator issues a check to the farmer. 99.5% of the market price of the beans. As for that missing 0.5%, it goes into a national soybean research and promotion fund called the Soybean Checkoff. The checkoff program in Maryland, it's administered through the USDA and the Maryland Soybean Board. Farmers pay in one half of 1% of the sale of their soybeans. It's then pooled together with all of the other farmers. And it's far from the only program of its kind. If you remember the slogans, got milk? or the other white meat. You're familiar with the promotional work of the dairy checkoff and pork checkoff programs. In fact, there are over 20 checkoff organizations in the U.S., which combined bring in about $750 million annually from millions of farmers nationwide. Talk about strength in numbers. We as an individual farm would not have much reach. But when farmers are able to pool their money together, they look at projects that are for research purposes, say into soybean improvement or ways to manage soybeans better. For example, improved weed control. The checkoff helped fund this University of Maryland study on combating Palmer amaranth, an invasive weed that threatens soybeans and other crops. So in this particular trial, what we're looking at is 20 different treatments so that we could get a, a comparison between the treatments as to what was most effective for Palmer amaranth control. And some of the research into new and improved beans by Schillinger's Genetics in Queenstown, also funded by the checkoff. Essentially what we're trying to do here is create a new soybean variety. Right now, one of the checkoff's biggest priorities is expanding the acreage of a variety called high oleic soybeans, they may not look any different from conventional beans, but it's what's inside that counts. A lot of packaged and processed foods, we're using hydrogenated soybean oil, which has trans fats that are associated with cardiac disease. So companies are looking to formulate their products to not have any trans fat. And because high oleic beans produce a more stable oil, it doesn't have to be hydrogenated, which means no trans fats. In 2018, Maryland farmers grew about 40,000 acres of high oleic beans to be processed at Purdue Farms' soy oil plant in Salisbury. Typically on a normal week, we're anywhere between six to six and a half million pounds of oil that will leave this facility. And that number is on the rise. To date, the soy industry has devoted millions of checkoff dollars towards increasing both acreage and demand for these specialty beans. And they're pursuing research into new applications. For example, in the automotive industry. The goal? Giving end users an incentive to choose soy oil over other non-soy alternatives. After all, for farmers, it comes down to one simple question. Is there a market? And the checkoff exists to make sure that the answer is yes.